So, um, yeah, I'm starting with this uh, too uh, obvious image, uh, the Escher uh, drawing of a hand drawing itself. Um, and I, I just put it here because it made me think about this complaint that Foucault has, which is that um, he says something like, why is it that only artists, professional artists, uh, can make walk objects, artistic objects? Uh, why can't we all uh, turn our life into a walk of art? Um, which is fine, it's interesting, it's prov provocative. Um, but there's a curious thing about it that I just want to uh, bring up. I mean, okay, fine. Let's say that you succeeded in turning your life into a walk of art. Um, if it happened, then any further walk that you're gonna make is gonna be not just a life as a cause that makes a walk as its effect, uh, because your life is already an effect. Your life is all already a walk of art. Your life is already, is something that was made uh, by whom, by yourself. Um, and that makes me think, I mean, again, let's say that you have a practice. Uh, let's say that um, you just, by the way, not just artistic, also intellectual or otherwise, let's say that you do critique. What is a kind of a self-referential critique? That when you criticize your own work, when you do a critique of your own thought, um, in all these cases, you are basically doing what Eschel is doing in a way. Uh, it's, it's a hand that writes, that draws itself. Uh, because again, if your life turned to a work of art, then it is art that makes new art. Uh, it's a work of philosophy that makes new works of philosophy. Uh, and I somehow find myself in this time in my life uh, entertaining that thought in relationship to my own practice. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a kind of a creati creative or intellectual Ouroboros, you know, this um, a snake that eats its own, uh, that devours its own tail. Um, only that uh, snakes eat stuff, uh, intellectuals think of stuff. So what does it mean, for instance, to be a thought that thinks of itself? I mean, that is how uh, Aristotle defines God, right? Um, can life be not just a work of art, but also a work of philosophy? What would that be like? Why did Foucault not raise that uh, possibility? Or maybe he did. Um, can yourself, can your life uh, be something that is thought? Isn't yourself or your life by now, we're all adults in the room, uh, be something that is thought? Uh, Aristotle also says that um, the activity of thinking is life. The actuality of thinking is life. Um, yeah, so I mean, if the, the highest manifestation of it is that kind of a God that thinks itself, that thinks its own thoughts, um, then doesn't it mean that God is an auto philosopher? I think it's pretty obvious. Um, Second image, yeah, that's a funny image. I actually just found it online. Thank you, Google. Um, it's an image of a philosopher holding a mirror. It's from the 17th century by a Spanish uh, artist named Ribera. Um, it's a really interesting image. Um, it, it, this is probably Socrates, so people believe, uh, holding a mirror, contemplating his own self. His back turns to the painter, to the viewer, to the world. Um, that's usually what it means to turn your back to the painter. Um, you don't engage with the world, you engage with your own image. Um, is that some kind of a nice illustration of what auto philosophy might be? Um, let's compare this image to another one. It's a, it's, a, it's a painting that Ribera painted uh, early on in his life. It's Gregory the Great, um, the Pope. Um, it's the other image in his uh, oeuvre that uh, has that weird uh, position of the painted figure, basically um, turning virtually his back to the painter, 
uh, pretty much the same position. If you superimpose these two images, they're almost the same. Um, and they talk with each other, I think, pretty intelligibly. Um, the philosopher is has pretty sh shabby clothes. Gregory has this beautiful red cape. Um, yeah, the clothes of the philosopher. Uh, Thomas Carlyle wrote a, a, a philosophy of clothes in the 19th century. I'm interested in someone writing some kind of a, a book about the clothes of philosophers over the years. But yeah, the shabbiness, the, the, the tattered clothes of Socrates versus the beautiful uh, dress of the, of the Pope. Um, the Pope has uh, this uh, spirit, this um, divine inspiration in the form of the dove, the white dove. Um, Socrates has nothing, just this darkness. Um, um, but the most important thing is that Gregory holds pen and paper. Um, Socrates holds a mirror so appropriately, given the fact that he never wrote anything. Um, you don't see the face of Socrates, but you see his face contemplating itself. Um, that is one way of thinking about auto-philosophy. Speculation, speculum is a mirror, right? Uh, speculative, uh, all these words have similar origins. Uh, that's another speculum, another mirror. Um, I took that selfie. Uh, I just call it a philosopher taking a selfie with Scott Lyle's talent. Um, it's a beautiful piece of art. One of my favorite contemporary pieces I've seen in the past few years in a gallery on the Lower East Side, uh, Miguel Abrao Gallery. Um, Scott Lyle takes these mirrors, regular mirrors, and then he layers them with more mirrors or certain kind of um, intricate ways by which whatever is reflected uh, is being uh, basically messed with. Uh, so you never really see yourself in any clear way. All you see is this shadowy um, uh, uh, image of your own self and whatever light reflects uh, in, in, in the painting. Uh, it is painted, it's a, it's a painted mirror, essentially. Um, I really like it as another way of thinking about what auto-philosophy might be. Um, partly because of this line from St. Paul, uh, who is also, in a way, talking with Socrates or the Greeks, uh, thinking about the idea of thinking, knowing thyself, uh, when he writes about the possibility of looking through a glass darkly, it's a famous line, looking through a glass darkly, through a mirror darkly, enigmatically, perhaps. Um, for Paul, this is how we see ourselves today. We see ourselves through a glass darkly. Uh, in the messianic time, he says, I will know as I am known. That's the continuation of the line about looking through a glass darkly. And uh, I think it's kind of significant because, um, I mean, of course, being known for Paul is being known by God, I suppose. Um, and he wants to know as much as he is known by God. But I think that, again, in auto philosophy, uh, the epistemological question is not. Stanley Cavell talks about the difference between knowing and acknowledging. Uh, I'm interested in this difference between uh, knowing and being known. Uh, by whom? Open question, not just God. If you know me uh, reading my own autophilosophy or seeing my own autophilosophy, uh, I'm being known. And can I know as I am known? Just an open question. Um, also, I want us to think about the fact that, again, you don't really see me clearly, uh, but rather darkly in this image. Um, I think it's a way of saying that all auto philosophy is in a way, doesn't deal really with private matters, but it also doesn't deal with public matters. Um, private in Greek is idiotes, uh, idiots, basically. An idiot in ancient Greek was just a private person. How can you write an auto philosophy that will not be idiotic in that sense? 
because again, I think that philosophy, all philosophy is never quite private, nor is it quite public. It doesn't deal with public issues as much as it doesn't really deal with private ones. It is also never really fact nor fiction. No philosophy is really a fact. No philosophy is really a fiction. And definitely uh, the same holds for auto philosophy. Um, yeah, we kind of like occupy this zone of indistinction as Agamben calls it, uh, or this uh, transitional space. It's something that Winnicott uh, brings up. Uh, we may talk about Winnicott in the second uh, by the end. Um, yeah, I mean, okay, fine. The personal can be political. Um, I, I agree. Uh, but can the personal also become theoretical, uh, abstracted in a certain way? Um, that is something that uh, I think that autophilosophy helps us to understand um, better. Um, another very well-known image, uh, the Raft of the Medusa. Uh, I put it up here because Hans Blumenberg has a really beautiful short little book highly recommended called um, Shipwreck with Spectator. Again, we go back to the spectacles, spectator, speculum, mirrors, but really uh, it's a book about what is philosophy. Um, and what Blumen Blumenberg says is that this image for him is a metaphor for philosophy. Why? Because where is the philosopher in the image? Uh, sometimes you think it's the guy with the red cape uh, holding a dead person in the front. But no, for Blumenberg, the philosopher uh, is the painter. Okay, the painter, where is the painter? His claim is that the painter is always on safe land, um, in, on terra firma, uh, looking at the calamity as it unfolds uh, at sea. Um, and that is the position of the philosopher. My reply to uh, um, Blumenberg is that if you write an autophilosophy, uh, you need to become the shipwreck yourself. You cannot just look at it from a distance. Um, also, that might mean that you turn into the, um, the, the iceberg on which the ship wrecked, you know? Uh, not always, sometimes, an external calamity will, or external danger will lead you to be in a position of a shipwreck yourself. Uh, but uh, oftentimes it is self-inflicted. Again, that, that reflective element. Um, also maybe every time you write an autophilosophy, it's like writing a letter and putting it in a bottle and sending it away from the deserted island on which you find yourself. Um, just another option of thinking about what that might be. Um, this is, is there, there is a series of, of uh, large scale uh, photos by uh, Struth where he will um, take pictures of people looking at pictures in galleries. This is in the Louvre. Um, one thing I want you to notice is that the spectators, spectators, um, are kind of like positioned very uh, similarly to the way that the people on the raft are positioned. They kind of like look at the same direction. Their formation is kind of similar. Um, but I also notice that the people on the raft uh, who want to be saved naturally uh, look away from the painter, from the painter, from the spectator. Um, also from you looking at the image let's say in a gallery, looking at the, the photo, photo of Struth, taking a photo of people looking at the Medusa, um, the gaze uh, comes backwards again, but um, when you watch it even online, as we do right now, um, this is not where the people on the shipwreck uh, are looking at. They look away from us. Uh, they don't want to be saved by us, I guess. Um, yeah, um, there is, however, some kind of an attraction uh, in the spectacle of the shipwreck. 
And I want us to keep it um, in mind because again, there are all these works of not just auto philosophy, but also auto fiction, auto theory. We'll talk about it as we go along, uh, where you will encounter a certain kind of a shipwreck of a person's life. And I'm just interested in the fascination that the readers or viewers have, the spectators, uh, in that um, spectacle of the shipwreck. Um, last thing, one of the last things I want to say about this image is simply that um, when you do auto philosophy, you kind of drown or get drenched in a certain kind of a theory or philosophy. Um, the self is not so much, again, like my selfie, is not so much uh, seen clearly. It's more kind of a silhouette uh, or um, an, an outline of a self, of a person, or even just like a mold of a human being, um, who, again, for me, in certain, wise, in certain ways is being somehow drenched by the philosophy or the theory that, that um, inundates uh, your mind as a thinker. Um, okay, last thing, sorry, is to say this in relationship to it, that I, I don't think about auto philosophy necessarily as an attempt to find yourself. I more think about it as a way to lose yourself, maybe. Um, Rilke talks about this monastery inside him. Okay, I have a monastery inside me. We may talk about monasteries later as well. Um, but do I want to enter this monastery inside me or do I want this auto philosophy to be an exit strategy? Um, and yeah, Chris mentioned my project that I call to imagine a form of life. However, when I'm writing this auto philosophy, I don't necessarily want to imagine a form of life. I kind of like am interested in the unraveling of a form of life. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of like an unraveling of a fabric or maybe it is a kind of a, a disentangling of knots. Uh, I'm using uh, terms that uh, Laplanche uses to describe the work of therapy, kind of like Penelope who uh, unravels whatever she ravels throughout the day waiting uh, for her husband uh, at home. And uh, yeah, I think about auto philosophies as that work of unraveling uh, of a fabric or untangling of knots, but really in preparation for new fabrics and new knots that may come by. Um, yeah, in that sense, auto philosophy is also a kind of like therapy on a budget. If you like. uh, yeah, okay.